more people are recognizing her work. I really enjoy it. People do love her work. Maybe it's because she put so much passion into it. Her art is mixed up with herself, and she's an icon here in Knoxville. There's just something about her, the look of her, her work, that's different from any other that I've seen. Each of her paintings, each of her works has a very similar appearance, but when you look at them, they're each different in a sophisticated and a very meaningful way. I think they're kind of a mystery. They're um, beautiful women. They're somewhat aloof. She gives them such character. And uh, there's always something interesting to see in each of them. And the shape of the people and the fact that the ladies kind of come out of the print. They really do come alive. And I think that's what intrigues people when they're looking at her paintings. They're always wondering um, who the women are and what era they lived in and, and what they're doing. They all seem to have something in common, but they're never the same. She's got this eerie ability to look at women in a very different way. You know, I don't know that it's a definite style because it's very current very contemporary now, but it kind of reflects back maybe to another time. Uh, what I see in a lot of her figures are 1920s flappers. They're also not very um, emotional. And, and so it's sort of a commentary on modern society and, and, and kind of how people feel about things. fabulous women. I'm not sure if these are inspired by actual people she's met or if she conjures these from her vivid imagination. They always seem to me like they're women from the past, kind of mixed in with women of the future. But I definitely think she uh, seems to be inspired by the 20s. I think it's sort of a throwback to a sort of modernist uh, sensibility. The work reminds me of something out of the 16th century, if you will. The colors and the patina of the work is kind of like a Renaissance or late Renaissance. tell that uh, if you look deep into them you can see that they each have their own kind of personalities and style and grace. I've always felt like it's very Art Deco, um, that 1920s kind of lacquered finish. It kind of reminds me of like an Art Nouveau kind of thing, almost kind of like a, where the, the Knoxville clipped. Some of her color choices reflect that, Gustave's work, uh, as well as some of the small mosaic type um, pieces that she paints. Well, Klimt uses uh, a lot of the gold colors and that the background that has that fusion of flowers and slightly sort of abstract shapes.
Gustav Klimt and Egon Schiele were the ones that were the strongest influence for me. I think the colors are really interesting and in the composition that's behind us you can see colors that are, are very related and also a kind of thematic uh, sense of ennui that the various figures that she depicts embody. Rebellion. My women are kind of rebellious. Historical art, so much of it was painted by men and they were usually sexually attractive women and women in the odalesque pose, which is the reclining pose, etc. And for, for the male gaze, pretty much. And then I started, all of a sudden, this woman emerged, and it was like, all of a sudden, it was her gaze, and she was looking at you, as if, well, what are you looking at? What are you thinking? And it was a different attitude, and that is a lot of the women that have liked my work, they have pointed it out. In fact, an older woman came up to me, and she said, um, and she said I have one of your paintings, and we were talking about it, and finally she went, it's the attitude. I love wood grain, I love the smell of wood and the organic feeling of wood. And I would tape my drawings onto four by eight foot pieces of plywood for my drawing boards. And then with pastels or whatever, they would go off onto the wood and I'd be like, oh my heavens. And I, I got very involved with the wood surface. I love being able to use mixed media, pastels, oil sticks, acrylics, pencils, all kinds of things, because wood will take things much more than canvas. I work, I paint, and then I scratch through it and paint over it again, and layers and layers. My favorite tool is the smudged finger. San Francisco, New Orleans, Asheville, Crest Emporium for 12 years, a new place that just opened up, Waynesville, North Carolina, Charleston, Palm Beach, Florida, and Palm Beach Gardens now. Uh, as long as I've known, been in Knoxville, I've seen Cynthia Market Art in one form or fashion. She sometimes does sort of, I guess, sort of vernacular work on, on sites that need to be redeveloped and, and they're kind of striking because she'll show up and paint something on a, you know, a very plain piece of wood. And I remember Cynthia's uh, artwork on boarded up houses and buildings and, and that's how her artwork started. I lived in D.C. for eight years and I came back and I was living over in the Christopher Swan building and I would get up on a Sunday morning and there was no one anywhere downtown. It was just dead. And I would have a bag of pencils and a bag of pastels, some erasers, and I would go and find old boarded up doorways. I would just have my women start to emerge from them. Her street art was, uh, it had the same style, but when she started getting more finished, and starting getting richer colors and, and really uh, perfecting her technique. She walks around and she's inspired and um, she, she sketches on the side of buildings that are boarded up. When they were developing Market Square, they built this um, palace for me. They built this plywood tunnel and just said, Cynthia, have at it. These are actually uh, the ones that uh, she did outside of this building when it was being renovated. I painted a lot of paintings and those are the ones that ended up in oodles and as you go to the preservation pub tonight at the door on the doorway is another painting. They all came from the work on the wall.
is a, a vibrant spirit in Knoxville. It reflects on the Knoxville community that an artist of her quality and of her interest uh, has made a career here. Cynthia is really a great example of so many great things that are going on down in Knoxville. It's like my paintings are a magnet for people that sort of are on the same wavelength of me in ways. I think it's a, a very good representative of Knoxville, just seeing her ladies around everywhere. I think Cynthia has a really good sense about um, Knoxville and what it's about, and, and also a really good uh, grounding in high art. Everybody needs a Cynthia Market. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,